if you're looking at getting an e-bike for commuting, or you already have one, and to get the most out of it, you want to use it all year round. You'll save loads of money on transport costs. Now, riding on a lovely day like this is fine, but riding all year has its challenges. In this video, we're going to look at the things you'll want to think about if you're riding your e-bike to work every day. As an example e-bike here, we've got this e scoot Wayfarer bike, which we've recently reviewed on e-bike tips and found to be a good budget option. There's a link popping up to that review right now. As ever, if you have any questions, pop them below. And if you enjoy this video, then hit the like button and subscribe to see more like it. Right, let's get going. If you're committing to an e-bike commute, then sometimes you'll be doing it in the rain. Although you'll probably find it's not as often as you think. And through the winter, you'll have the dark to contend with too, and the cold, more on those in a bit. The first thing you should do is fit mud guards. They protect you and importantly, your bike from road spray. Now this is especially important in winter when there's salt on the road because electronics and salty water do not mix. A full set of mud guards like this is best and you can add rain flaps at the bottom for even better coverage. To protect yourself, it's normally best to go for full waterproofs. On a normal bike, when you're working hard, they can get really sweaty. But if you're letting the motor take the strain, then it's much less of an issue. Your feet are still exposed, so go for waterproof boots. Wellies are a cheap and really effective option, and you can keep your work shoes dry in your bag or just leave them under your desk. If you've been caught in a proper deluge, then it's a good idea to remove the battery if your bike allows you to and let the battery contacts dry. If water has got in, it can short the battery and that can damage it. Many e-bikes like this e-scoot have integrated lighting systems or the option to fit one. That's generally the best option as you don't have to remember to put them on or charge them. If your e-bike doesn't already have plumbed in lights, check to see whether the bike system supports them. If not, you can buy very good rechargeable lights for not much money these days. Most of them are USB rechargeable and they'll easily last for a week of commuting. You need to think about your commute and where you'll be riding. Cities are generally lit even after dark, so some lights to get you seen will be fine. If you have to ride on unlit sections, you probably want something a bit more powerful. Always check the weather before you head out. If it's cold enough to be icy, then riding can be dangerous. You can get spiked tires for winter if you live somewhere that ice is more than an occasional issue. Wrap up warm and pay particular attention to your hands. If you get numb hands, then controlling the bike can get really difficult. Get some good quality gloves that are as thick as possible without affecting your ability to use the bike's controls. E-bike batteries need particular care when it's really cold. Your battery won't last as long in cold weather, so be sure you have enough charge. It's best to keep your battery indoors if you can, even if your bike stays outside. And if it's below about five degrees, then never ever charge the battery outside or in an unheated outbuilding. Charging the battery when it's near or below freezing can completely ruin it. Always take it indoors to charge and let it warm up before you plug it in. In cold weather, it's a good idea to keep the battery indoors as much as you can, it'll just work better. Punctures are always a pain, but on an e-bike, they can be even more problematic. If you're running a mid-motor, then removing the wheels is generally no more difficult than on a standard bike. But if there's a motor in your front hub or like here on this e-scoot in your rear, you may need extra tools to get your wheel out and you'll need to know how to disconnect the motor too. The best bet, of course, is not to get a puncture in the first place. Check your tire pressures regularly. If the pressure is low, it can lead to pinch flats when you hit potholes or curbs, especially with a heavier motor wheel. Check the tread of the tire regularly too. If there are bits of glass or thorns embedded in the tire, they'll eventually work their way in and then puncture your inner tube. If you're suffering punctures on a regular basis, then consider swapping the tires for something more durable. Many tires have a puncture resistant strip that's below the tread that resists things like thorns and glass make sure you're covered in an emergency. A repair canister like this that contains sealant can be a quick way to get going again without taking a wheel off. You could even consider solid tyres. They're a lot better than they used to be. They don't offer quite the same levels of grip and comfort as a pneumatic tyre, but they're a fit and forget option and you can't puncture them no matter how hard you try. Commuting all year means using your bike a lot. And although e-bikes don't need a huge amount of servicing, it's always good to keep an eye on the stuff that does need attention. Regularly servicing your bike means it will run smoother 
and last longer. Firstly, make sure your chain is properly lubricated. If it's squeaking or it's rusty or the links are stiff, that's a bad sign. Chains eventually wear out too, so it's a good idea to have your chain checked a couple of times a year. You don't want your brakes to stop working. This is bad, so check the pads for wear. Many brake pads have wear indicators that you can use to judge when to replace them. As brakes wear, you'll often need to adjust your brakes to keep the same performance. It's a good skill to learn, and it's generally not that difficult. Obviously, your wheels and pedals should turn smoothly, and your handlebars too. If any of them are stiff, or feel gritty, the bearings inside might need replacing. This is probably a job for your local bike shop. Lastly, keep an eye on the motor system. Give all the cables a once over to make sure all the connections are tight and that there are no frayed or loose wires. Check the battery connections are clean and dry as well. The last thing you want is to come back to your bike to find that some low life has run off with it. So make sure your bike is well secured at both ends of your journey. Now, carrying a heavy lock on a lightweight road bike isn't really much fun, but on an e-bike, it's pretty heavy already, it's much less of an issue. The best approach is to have a pannier bag on a bike like this that you can keep a sturdy lock in all the time, so you can always secure your bike. The best option is to lock your bike somewhere that's already secure, like a lock garage or a storeroom. A good quality D-lock is a good option, but something like this city chain is sometimes more versatile. If you have to leave your bike outside, then make sure you lock your bike to something secure. Thin railings are easy to cut, and even heavy e-bikes like this can be lifted off signposts. Pick a spot where there are plenty of people about. A deserted alley is an easy place for a thief to spend some time attacking your lock. If you're just popping into a shop, then a frame lock on your bike can be a useful deterrent for a few minutes, but don't rely on it to keep your bike safe for any longer than that. So those are our top tips for commuting all year round on a bike like this is Scoot Wayfarer, or any e-bike really. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you've got any comments, add them below, and don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon to get notified when we make more videos. Cheers.